For the remainder of the animal kingdom, there are three germ layers during embryonic development, ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. With the exception of echinoderms, which are sea stars and the like, all other animals have bilateral symmetry. The advantage of bilateral symmetry is the formation of a head region where most sensory organs and nervous tissues are concentrated. This allows the animal to be forward-facing, having the most sensitive organs in contact with the environment first. The flatworms include free-living flatworms, tapeworms, and flukes, which are acelomate, in other words, lacking a body cavity at all. Nematodes, also known as roundworms, have a pseudocelum, where the body cavity is found between the mesoderm and endoderm tissues. Arthropods, including insects, crustaceans, and spiders, have a true coelom surrounded completely by mesoderm tissue. The arthropods make up over 85% of all living things, not just animals, 85% of all living things. Their success is owed to having jointed appendages and a hard exoskeleton. In addition, Nematodes and arthropods grow by shedding their outermost layer, a term called ecdysis. For this, both nematodes and arthropods are placed in a subkingdom of animals called ectozoa. The most ancestral of bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic animals are the flatworms, phytum platyhelminths. Most flatworms are parasitic, relying on one or more hosts to survive and reproduce. They are the acelomates, meaning there's no body cavity that exists between the outer layer of integument to the digestive tract. They are also triploblastic, with three embryonic tissue layers. The ectoderm, which gives rise to the integument and nervous system, the endoderm, forming the digestive system, and mesoderm, which develops all other body systems. Free-living flatworms are scavengers and predators, whereas parasitic ones feed from the tissues of their host, including us. Ew! Flatworms have an incomplete digestive system where the mouth is used to bring in food and expulse of waste. Many have branched guts that distribute nutrients and waste. Tapeworms lack a digestive system altogether and simply just absorb nutrients from their surroundings and dispel waste. Flatworms have a unique excretory feature called a flame cell, which is a series of cilia that dispel of waste out of the body. The nervous system consists of a series of nerve cords running the length of the body with a concentration of nerves forming a ganglion near the anterior portion. Some even have sensory structure for detecting chemicals in light. The flat body allows for circulatory and gas exchange to occur by diffusion across the integument. This group is monoecious with internal fertilization, but can also reproduce by fragmentation and splitting. Flatworms are typically divided into four different groups. The turbellarians, or free-living flatworms, are found in marine and freshwater environments, or <laughs> habitats such as the forest floor. They contain ciliated cells on the ventral surface to allow for mucus production to help them glide across surfaces. Monogeneans are fish ectoparasites. Ectoparasites generally reside on the external integument of their host. In the case of these, they produce digestive enzymes that digest host tissue or graze on the mucus or skin particles. As larvae, monogeneans are free living until they find a host and remain on them. Trematodes, also named flukes, are endoparasites of mollusks and many other groups of organisms, including humans. Their life cycles are complex, using a primary host for sexual reproduction and secondary host for asexual reproduction. Primary hosts are usually vertebrates where, where mature trematodes sexually reproduce in the digestive system and fertilized eggs are shed through the feces. When the feces reach a waterway, they infect snail hosts and develop afterwards, heading to a fish for more development and encystment in mussels. When humans eat raw or undercooked animal hosts, they become infected. Most trematode infections can be prevented with proper water sanitation techniques, which poorer countries often lack. Cestodes, also known as tapeworms, have a scolex, which resembles a head, but it actually is a holdfast made of suckers and hooks to keep the tapeworm attached to host intestines. Tapeworms are made of many segments called proglottids, which really make the entire animal a colony since each proglottid has its own excretory and reproductive capabilities. Tapeworms of genus Tania, 
Isn't that a nice girl's name? Can infect humans as a secondary host. Generally, cattle and pigs eat vegetation that is contaminated by the eggs or proglottids of tapeworms, and the tapeworm develops and insists itself in the muscular tissue. Humans eat undercooked or raw meat with tapeworm cysts, and the tapeworm takes up residence and grows in the intestines, and some have been recorded to be up to 30 feet long. Humans can spread tapeworms by shedding eggs or proglottids in their feces in unsanitary ways, and livestock somehow ingest it in vegetation. This next group is the nematodes. The nematodes are so abundant that they make up some of the biggest chunk of biomatter on this planet. So far, 28,000 species have been discovered, with 16,000 of them being parasitic. There's likely more than a million in existence, since many are parasites that evolve alongside their host. Roundworms are cylindrical in shape with tapered ends. They have a complete digestive system with a mouth and an anus. In between, a pharynx, intestine, and rectum are also found. Almost half of all nematode species are endoparasites, meaning they grow and develop within the body of the host. Here are a few examples. Nicator are hookworms found in dogs, cats, and humans, which feed on our blood. This is the most common parasite that require puppies to be dewormed. Trichinella are roundworms that cause trichinosis, a GI disease caused by consuming their eggs, which are found in raw or undercooked pork. Ascaris, or giant roundworms, steal nutrients in their host and can cause a GI blockage. This is found in livestock and people. This next group is Phylum arthropoda. Arthropods make up 85% of all living species, with many still yet to be discovered. The vast majority of arthropod species are insects. All members have jointed appendages, a hard exoskeleton made of chitin, the same stuff that actually forms fungal cell walls. They also have functional segmentation, meaning that the body parts are repeated. They are also eucelomate animals with protostome development where the mouth forms first and the anus forms last during embryonic development. Segmentation in arthropods lead to specific regions such as a head, thorax, and an abdomen. Each region harbors specific body systems. Arthropods have a coelom called a hemocele, which is a large opening where blood pools and distributes gases, nutrients, and waste. Rather than blood being enclosed in blood vessels, as we see in vertebrates, segmented worms, and some mollusks, blood is in an open circulatory system where organs are bathed in a blood and a small heart moves that blood around. That's why insects seem to splatter when you squish them. Gas exchange happens in a variety of ways. Insects use spiracles, or tiny openings, in their abdomens to draw air inwards. Spiders utilize book lungs, and aquatic arthropods use book gills. Both are called such as the internal stacks of alternating air pockets look like pages of a book. Well, there are five subphyla of arthropods. The first is Trilobitomorpha which consists of the now extinct trilobites that dominated the seas from 540 to 251 million years ago. They were likely most closely related to spiders, scorpions, and horseshoe crabs. The first of the living phyla of arthropods, as well as the largest group, are the insects, with over 925,000 species. Insects owe their success to having three pairs of walking legs, a head, thorax, an abdomen, and wings. Their success is likely owed to the diversity of mouthparts and wings, allowing them to be located in a diversity of habitats using a variety of food types. Examples of insects include ants, beetles, butterflies, and bees. The next major group of arthropods is Myriapoda, or centipedes and millipedes, which can have up to 750 legs. Disgusting. With 13,000 species, they are often found in conditions in terrestrial habitats. Sorry, I don't have pics or video of this. And while they are part of this world and very important, I just don't like looking at them. Crustaceans consist of shrimp, lobsters, crabs, and crayfish, as well as terrestrial pill bugs you might find in your backyard. There are 47,000 different species, and like insects, they have a head, thorax, and abdomen, but the head and thorax are fused to form the cephalothorax, making a strong protective plate called a carapace. 
Their exoskeletons are amongst the strongest of arthropods because they are infused with calcium carbonate. Crustaceans have separate sexes, making them dioecious, except barnacles, which are monoecious. That's right, barnacles are not mollusks, but sessile crustaceans residing in shells. Crustaceans are mostly carnivores, but many are detritivores, meaning they eat dead and decaying flesh. Others are filter feeders, which is the case with barnacles. Warning, this last group may scare some folks as it contains spiders. This group is called Shalisharata, including the spiders, scorpions, and horseshoe crabs, surprisingly, with over 103,000 species discovered. And this group gets their name from the Shalisharae, or the first set of appendages used mostly for feeding, but in spiders to inject venom into their prey. Aquatic salicylates, like horseshoe crabs, can use their book gills for respiration. Terrestrial salicylates use book lungs for gas exchange. We just reviewed a large portion of protostome animals. In our next video, we're going to review two more protostome phyla consisting of the segmented worms and the mollusk.